Hello baseball fans, welcome into the British Baseball Podcast. You can reach us on social media at Brit Baseball Pod or you can email the show at British Baseball Podcast at gmail.com. I'm your host Matthew and welcome to the show. On today's show, I am very excited to have the Liverpool Children's General Manager, Mr. Ian Bleese, on. He's been a long-time supporter of the podcast. I say long time, it's only five episodes in. As you well know, this is the Monday, the 10th of February episode. Um, so we're going to be pushed for time on this one, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Without further delay, please welcome Mr. Ian Bleese. Ian, how are you doing? I'm really good, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for agreeing uh, to come on and, and talk about uh, a few bits and pieces about your well-established club. Yeah, yeah, the Trojans. Uh, they've, they've been around been around uh, a lot longer than I have. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can tell you a little bit about that if you like. Yeah, sure. So the, the Trojans are the oldest existing um, club in definitely England, possibly in Britain. Um, and we've been around since uh, since 1946. Now we're far from the first team, you know, to to play in uh, in in Britain, but we're the uh, we're, we're the we're the oldest one that's been continuously going. Um, so yeah, it was founded by a group of ex-servicemen in 1946. Um, I think they they all used to drink in the uh, in the Halton Castle pub, um, and um, from what I understand, I think there was a bit of a a bit of banter with some of the some of the other baseball teams it was quite a big um, quite a big league at the time, um, and they got challenged they got challenged to a game, um, so they uh, so they put a team together and they had a go, and that's how the team started. Um, we're actually uh, named the Trojans not because of like the ancient force of fighting men, but because uh, the beer that the guys drank in the pub was 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 called the Trojans. It was by Higson's Brewery. Um, and that was that. That was Trojan beer. Um, so the uh, I think the, the the barmaid who used to work in there used to refer to the used to refer to the Trojans in the back. Um, so um, because the pub was called the Halton Castle, the original team name was the Halton Trojans, and um, we've been the Trojans ever since. So it's not so after it's not the uh, the Greek um, mythological horse. No. It's it's a bottle no. of beer. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I can't. I can't comment. I can't comment on you know, what the beer was named after. Uh, but um, but yeah, it's, yeah. We're, we're, we're named after a beer, um, and uh, I think um, that's fit. That's fit quite well with uh, with the way the club has uh, has been. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, we we had a training session today. Actually, I, I had a short meeting uh, afterwards with a couple of guys who were looking to get involved in coaching. Um, and by the time I finished that meeting, uh, you know, a couple of guys are on the second pint at half eleven on a Sunday morning. So, um, so you know, it's uh, it's still very much a social thing as well as uh, as well as a lot of the effort that goes into to competing. We uh, we like to sort of have some fun as well. It's good to hear. Um, a bit of a, a weird question for you. Like you, you're literally down the road from me in, in Manchester, um, not not too far, but about ten minutes away. So, how does a guy from from Manchester, who supports Bolton Wanderers, like I do, yeah. uh, which is a pain we'll share some other yeah. time. Um, <laughs> how did you become the GM of a team about an hour oh, away? Um, yeah, so like you said, I was originally living in living in Bolton. I lived in Bolton until I was 21, so until 2002. Um, and um, I, I started off playing with a Bolton junior team uh, when I was when I was 14, um, and one of the guys that helped run that team was a guy called uh, Pat Cluxton, and uh, Pat was uh, involved with a team in Preston, the Preston Bobcats, as they were at the time. Um, and a few of us, uh, myself, Jamie, uh, and a few of the other guys from Bolton Knights, um, decided to, you know, go and play with Preston when we when we became old enough. Um, and um, we spent a few years with Preston. We enjoyed some some real success. We got to the national finals. They played on a fantastic facility down in Brighton um, called Pavilion Field. It was at the time it was just fantastic. You know, uh, they used to hire in grandstands for the uh, uh, for the for the national finals as well, and put up uh, put up proper outfield fencing, and, and they had proper dugouts. And we'd never seen anything like that before. We'd, we'd generally been playing on parks. 
Um, and um, Preston, uh, after a couple of good years, uh, got invited to join the, the National Baseball League, the Rawlings National Baseball League, as it was then. Um, and it made sense for us to, to do that. And we'd kind of hoped that perhaps some other teams from the north would join as well. Um, so we signed up to it. Um, and unfortunately, no other teams from the north joined up. Um, we also lost a couple of players um, to uh, uh, to things like uh, just retirement or to um, family commitments because the travel was uh, the travel in baseball has always been um, always been something uh, to consider. Um, but suddenly we were playing against teams, for example, in Brighton or Croydon, um, Windsor, um, as opposed to playing against teams in Hull, which is only a couple of hours away. We were, we were, we were asked to go sort of four hours. Uh, and unfortunately, the Preston team didn't survive that season. Um, I know Josh Chetwind, when he was on last week, uh, touched on that he, he played one game for us uh, that year. And he, um, uh, and it, that was probably the, the beginning of the end for us, unfortunately. Um, we just, um, too much travelling. Um, so we we ended up folding, and unfortunately, the Preston team never came back. Um, so I was asked by um, Robbie Orm um, to. Robbie Orm was one of the uh, one of the long-serving players and coaches at Liverpool Trojans. Um, he did a lot of great work for us. Um, and I, me, myself, and a couple of other guys from Preston were asked if we wanted to come and play for for Liverpool to to help them out in their own title bid. Um, so. I did, and um, I, that was in that was in two thousand and uh, that was in two thousand and three, um, and I've been with the I've been with the Trojans ever since, and um, so the last um, coming up on seventeen years, I guess, um, and um, you know I think that the, the more you uh, take from an organisation in terms of uh, enjoyment and playing and that kind of thing. The more you want to put back into it, and yeah, um, yeah. so um, after a while, I was uh, after you know, I helped out um, Rob Alger. He was the uh, he, he was a, he was the, the manager uh, of the Trojans for quite a long time. I, I was kind of unofficially his assistant manager. Uh, if he if he wasn't around, then he'd ask me to uh, to pick the team and, and keep things going. Um, and myself, uh, Dave Dave Martin Byers, uh, and uh, Rob Alger sort of formed this again at the time unofficial committee the club's really come a long way in the last few years um and um that sort of it took the pressure off one person and we were able to we were able to share a lot of the decision making and um ha have conversations about you know future ambitions of the club um and uh, that kind of evolved into uh, uh into uh, when rob retired um uh, i was uh, asked by the rest of the team to to fill the gap. It was a it was a tough first year. We, we, we've been on the back of a, a couple of really successful years under Rob, um, and I think our only aim uh, the first year that I took over was to not forfeit any games yeah. um, because yeah, yeah. We, we'd lost a few players. We didn't really have any pitching. Um, Martin Godsall <clears throat> was injured, um, and we were we were really struggling to. Um, to succeed, um, but we got through that season, <clears throat> and then after that, um, it was it was great. We had we had three three years in a row where we won the northern title, and then after the third title, I decided that I had I'd uh, had enough of being the first team manager. Um, Dave Martin Byers was the general manager at the time and had been for the previous sort of um, five or six years, if not a bit longer, um, and he decided that he quite fancied a go at. Um, managing the first team so at the club's AGM we put it forward that we would like to change roles and that was and there were no objections so so we've done that and um, so Dave uh, Dave took over running the first team last year had a fantastic year as well um, and so we won we won the league again um, which I think is our fourth consecutive uh, title um, and um, yeah we're hoping for more of the same under Dave's watch this year and I moved into a a general manager role, which is a lot more, um, it's a lot more about the club as a whole and a lot more about how we can uh, uh, 
sort of expand and and grow and uh, you know share baseball with more people. So it, for for those that don't really know, is that the typical role of a general manager, like the the overseer of the the whole club? Um, I think it, I mean it, it, I think it would vary club to club, to be honest. Um, I think I've known a lot of people um, who only really have one person who who do any work, and that, you know they're usually the first team manager and the head coach and the uh, you know and they're organising everything and they're they're negotiating with other people because we've got so many uh, so many people with a good knowledge of baseball. Uh, we've sort of evolved our our committee into into roles that that suit, and that's what and that's kind of what it's worked out. That's kind of how it has worked out for 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 this role for me. Do you think that the Liverpool team's success in baseball is helping you to promote the game in the local area? Have you found more uh, people coming down to to charts and taser sessions? Are your numbers growing? Or the, yeah, I mean, do you know what? We had a we had a session today indoors, um, and honestly, there were forty five people there. Um, you know, luckily we had um, quite a lot of people who were able to take on coaching, and so we so we split them up into so into about four groups, uh, and we did a few different things um, because that's a, that's such a huge number. You know, mm. if we if all if all those you know, and and there was probably another. 10 to 15 people who played last year who weren't there today um so you know if, if that's the kind of numbers that we're that we're gonna have signed up for this year then that then that's that's just a fantastic achievement yeah um, definitely. um so i don't know whether our success has 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 helped uh, helped us promote in the, in the in the local area um i think within the baseball community people take an interest you know because we've been successful um but um i think but I think outside the baseball community, people are still shocked and surprised. You know, um, if I mention to people that I'm that I, you know I play baseball, and they're like, oh, I didn't realise they play that in the UK. Followed by some joke about rounders. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, so, so yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't really. You know, we've got a pretty good social media. Um, we've got a pretty good social media following. Um, but I think really what where a lot of our players have come from um have come from friends of friends you know but we've got uh, particularly within players of the second team last year um we've got a group of people who absolutely love the sport and they and they promote it uh, mercilessly to all their friends and family um, and we get people coming down to watch that uh, we've got a guy who used to play rugby to a really good standard um and he's you know he's brought he's brought family and friends down um, he's he was he was a friend uh, of um, a guy called Tommy, um, who's been with the club for a number of years now. Um, so I, I think it's really quite an, quite an organic sort of sort of growth. But we are looking to promote ourselves and 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 push uh, push the sport uh, of baseball and now softball. Um, uh, and um, we want to get as many people playing uh, as locally as possible. Yeah, yeah, I think that's um, some good points you've you've made there, especially trying to reach out with like word of mouth. I think one of the biggest struggles I've had, I've, I've had a few friends come down, and unfortunately, some of them have had injuries and family commitments, but they, they seem to be in. It's just not being able to be consistent, and my partner um, is really supportive of me going down to Manchester on a on a Sunday, like pretty much go missing for a couple of hours. Um, so yeah, I. I we can only do our best to try and try and spread the word, I suppose. Well, that's exactly it. I think um, most people who play baseball um, or have played it for a number of years tend to find that they, are, you know, they love the game because actually it's quite it's quite hard to do. Uh, and what I mean by quite hard to do, I don't necessarily I'm not necessarily talking about the effort of hitting a pitch, um, although that in itself is a challenge. Um, it's it's that it's the time commitment. You know, um, you mentioned there about being out couple of hours on a Sunday morning and your partner's been your partner's been really supportive that's that's fantastic that's brilliant um if it comes to you joining a club um and then the regular baseball day um you're probably out from eight in the morning and not back until 6 p.m it's basically like a day at work yeah um you know and I think um it's one of the reasons that I firmly believe softball's got a place um because um slow pitch softball um you can you can basically turn up have a game and be gone again within two or three hours 
had a good laugh. You could probably had a, probably had a beer in that time as well. Um, you know, so it's a much more accessible form of the game. And until we can find a way to make baseball more accessible, that's a good way for people to sort of uh, to sort of stay active. And really, yeah. the only way we're going to make baseball more accessible is by floodlit facilities, midweek games, um, you know, and, and having them happen more often. And, and we're, we're we're several years away from that. I know that uh, Liam Carroll has been trying to get a an, an astro an astroturf facility um, for his senior team um, for a long time. So if he can't get one, um, then our little club in Liverpool has got no chance. So you've 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 just had your a, AGM um, last couple of it was about a week ago or so, two weeks ago. The the Trojans AGM was uh, yeah it was it was the start of uh, yeah middle of January so yeah about about three four weeks ago. Are you got any takeaways you want to share with us or is it hush hush? Oh no, I mean um, yeah, I mean I think the the AGM I mean I think um, I think the big thing for us is that is that we're launching a, a third team this year. Um, and that's uh, it's been something that's been in in the pipeline um, for a little while, or certainly in the thinking for a little while. The, we launched a second team, um, I guess, uh, six years ago now, about about six years ago, um, and they've done so well to get to the level that, that they're at. They're going to be in the same division as us this year at AAA in the north, um, and. Um, uh, really now it's a case of we, we needed a third team to continue our development remit mm -hmm. because you know the second team are now you know they now want to play competitive baseball uh, and this third team is is there to provide opportunities for new players to get involved um so uh, that came about because we we were uh, contacted by mitch cross uh, formerly of uh, halton baseball club um midway through last year last season they were struggling for players week in week out and we actually had an abundance and um, so we were able to help them finish the season by sending players down to play for them um, and from there uh, it kind of made sense that we actually made that merger more formal and um, so we've merged uh, formally and uh, it's might as well get this bit out as well because I'm mumbling. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've merged uh, properly. Um, some of their players have come and have, have been training with us. Uh, they're all going to be Trojans. Uh, and uh, I mentioned earlier on when I was telling you about the history of the club uh, that the team was called the original team was called the Halton Trojans. Mm -hmm. So actually, our third team now they're going to be based in Halton near Runcorn uh. are going to be called the Halton Trojans. So circle. It's, a, it's a nice little tip of the cap to our history again and you'll if you ever see anything of our social media uh, anything of our uh, soon to be coming website um uh, you'll see that we love we're very proud of our history and we talk about it all the time and we thought this was a really fitting way to uh, to pay tribute uh, is that to the, the uh, original yeah. founding team so is, is that the meat pies and rbis one that you sent me a link to uh yeah i think so yeah i think it was i, I love that name it's brilliant Especially being northern, <laughs> yeah, half from Wigan, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I did. Uh, that was a really good article. And um, for the listeners, just like to to say that when I was like restarting up the the podcast in its first few few episodes, Ian um, was more than generous with providing me with a lot of information, the history, um, to help me get the ball rolling, um, which is really appreciated because we've we've never really met or. Like I went to Bootle last season for the like the end of season tournament that you had. I took the family yeah. down there and there was a nice turnout, but I never really sort of got to mingle with, with any of the players because I was just a guy just enjoying the sport at the time. So it never really crossed my mind until. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, we're probably all, we're all probably pretty focused on the, uh, on, on, on the game anyway at that time. I think sometimes it, uh, we obviously played in the last game. Um, so uh, so it, so in that in that format, um, it, sometimes we, we, it's hard to sort of get a chat unless you hang around till the end. I mean, yeah. but we did hang around for hours afterwards. We had uh, one of the guys, Rich, a South African guy. He cooked up a braai. You, you and I might call that a barbecue, but we're wrong. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, we had, we had we cooked some cooked some great meat, uh, drank some beers, and then a few of us went out afterwards as well. You know, that's how we celebrate winning. 
Yeah, I definitely missed that one. I think I would remember <laughs> if there's, there's a big barbecue involved. Uh, so what, what are your aims, goals and objectives for this up and coming season? Sure. I mean, I think uh, from, a, from a team perspective, or from a club perspective, uh, the aim has to be to try and defend our, our northern title. Um, where uh, is that? This, you know, this is the, the first team perspective. Um, we've been we've been very successful. Like I said before, I think we've won four in a row. Um, the fact that we won so many that I even have to think about um, whether whether it's three or four in a row, I'm not sure. Um, but uh so yeah that, that's the aim for the first team without doubt uh, that's going to be a really tough challenge um sheffield bruins have done some really good recruitment um they've, they've come a long way as a team anyway um but they've picked up uh, jamie ratcliffe uh, we believe from uh nottingham rebels he's an excellent pitcher really good hitter as well um i think they've picked up uh, another player but i've forgotten who it was but um definitely someone who's going to make a difference to their lineup anyway mm. um Cartmel, um, on paper, probably got one of the probably got the strongest side uh, in the league. They were uh, unfortunate; they were disqualified uh, last year because they forfeited too many games. Otherwise, they uh, they would have been in the finals, and they would have been in with a with a with a good chance. Uh, they've got uh, one of the best hitters in the league in Ben Pearson, probably the, probably the best pitcher in the league in Luke Armstrong. Um, they're just a, a really good unit. of yeah, really good, really good uh, team of players. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's only been I remember playing against them in the top level when they were all sort of you know 15, 16 years old and they were getting whooped every week, and it was almost you know it was it was we almost didn't enjoy playing them because you know, no one likes to go down and beat up on kids, but these kids grew up really well and they're they're, they're a real force uh, this year. Um, new new into the top flight Manchester A's, um, uh, they won the. Uh, double A championship last year, they beat the Tujans in the in the best of three final. Uh, they picked up uh, Jonathan Rodriguez um, and um, Jordan Grucott, uh, who used to be with the uh, with the Nottingham Rebels. They're two really really good players. I think um, so, who you're talking about there. I was at training today, and Joy can see a few people that definitely <laughs> stick out above the crowd. I was like. Whew. Yeah, well, uh, it means business. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, J Rod is, you know, he's a coach with GB. He runs his own, I think it's Legends Baseball Club, which is like a collegiate baseball team in uh, in California. Uh, you know, he's he's next level. He'll make a real difference while he's around. I believe he's gone for the majority of the summer uh, because he because he because he runs this club in uh, in California as well. But while he's around, he's he'll make a real difference to the Manchester A's lineup. Um, and I'm familiar with I'm familiar with several of their guys. Anyway, they've been you know they're, they're a team that have been around uh, been around the leagues for quite a while. I actually went um, to them with uh, I actually went to Holland with them um, a few years ago for a for a tournament. Uh, we just we just lost in the final. We actually had a guest player in centre field that uh, that dropped a catch that would have uh, would have seen us win the title. The uh, the wheel of cheese. Um, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean I think. The the AAA side are, are up against it. Obviously, the Tujans are going in there, and um, we only played them once last year. Uh, and the Tujans, um, they had big leads going into the last inning of both games, uh, and we had to come back and win. Um, you know, I think possibly they just ran out of pitching in 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 both games, and we were able to we were able to uh, to, to knuckle down and get the victory. But the Tujans uh, have, have come a long way. We've got. Uh, we've got a lot of players to be, uh, I would imagine, inserted into both teams uh, from the new players that have come along, as well as the third team. Uh, and I think they're, uh, I think they're going to be, they're going to be a challenge for anyone. Um, you'd have to ask Scott about what that team's aims uh, are for the year. Um, but I would imagine that they won't be going into it thinking that you know they want to try and win two or three games. They'll be going in to to try and. You know, win as many games as possible and, and really challenge. I think they'll be going for the playoffs. Um, and uh, obviously, the third team. Uh, the third team. Uh, the, the aims are usually pretty basic. Uh, we've secured the services of some good, experienced coaches to uh, to help uh, bring that team on. Uh, and that that is about development. That team. So I think you know that's going to be about introducing people to the sport. Uh, and I think probably a good aim will just be to not 
have any forfeits and let and let's just see how many wins we can get at the end of the season. Yeah, well, I, I'm kind of looking forward to to next season from a hopeful player's point of view, but just just from a watching perspective as well, it's just been been good. Like I said to off air before, it's one of the first games I watched was Manchester versus Liverpool, and um, yeah, it was it was quite close and competitive. I don't know if that's like the city's rivalries with other sports that sort of spur them on, but. I've I've not really seen any rivalries within baseball. Everyone sort of seems to know everyone. It's sort of like older brothers that were born minutes apart type of thing. Like who's who's going to try and get <laughs> one up on on who sort of thing. Because when I was talking to some of the coaches before that was, I was having you on the show today. They're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, we know Ian. He's a good guy. And I've mentioned to you before, like when whenever I've, I've I've spoken about you, you sort of being one of the first people to get in touch with me. Everyone's come back with with nothing but great things to say about you, which is why. I wanted you on as a guest because, you know, you, you helped me to get my foot under the table to start with with some content and you've been really supportive and I really appreciate what you've done. So I wanted to throw the the um, the floor open to you to, to discuss anything that you wanted to really. Yeah, well, I mean, thanks very much. I mean, the, the feeling's mutual on all the guys that have, that, have, that have said nice things as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of us that have been around a long time and, uh, you get the odd polarizing figure uh, in in the game. People who uh, perhaps aren't particularly diplomatic, um, you know, you get the odd idiot as well. Um, but to be perfectly honest, the vast majority of the people that have been around this game um, and have, and 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 have, have been volunteers in this game to help grow it are, are, are great people. You know, I could I could name I could name people from every from every team uh, that have done a lot of done a lot of great work. Yeah, and. Um... I think that's all my questions done for today. I can throw it open to some some list of questions if if you're up for a few. Yeah, sure, why not? Cool. Uh, first one comes from Charlie Baffo uh, from Twitter. He's asked, how did you find the experience of playing a three-game series for the championship in 2019 rather than a one-off game? So we, we were talking before about great people and uh, Charlie is actually one of the driving forces of Sheffield Bruins and he's put a lot of effort in to gain uh, to gain them uh, where they are and have the success that they've had, despite the fact that they're a relatively new club. I think they've only played two seasons, so mm-hmm. I've got a lot of respect and time for Charlie. So also, you know, Charlie was on the receiving end. He, he was uh, he was he, he lost in in that final. Um, uh, I think that the best of three uh, format was was great. Uh, I think what we wanted to do with that format was reward pitching depth. Uh, and, I, and I think that worked, and I think that was probably a, a factor in the in, in the win. Um, we'd qualified top, um, so we didn't play in the second and third qualifier uh, game to get into the best of three final. Um, so when we came to the when we came into the into the best of three final, we had a, we had a fresh pitching lineup, whereas uh, Sheffield had already used a pitcher. Uh, and um, despite the fact that that pitcher Mario uh, came in and actually won game two for them, or he was the pitcher who uh, you know who got who was awarded that win, um, he uh, they, they'd run out of arms I think in the uh, in the end. Uh, unfortunately, one of their one of their options, Andrea Postai, who's a Romanian international pitcher, he was injured and couldn't throw. Um, Josh Taylor came back in, um, tried to you know tried to affect. Uh, something he's he dominated us throughout the regular season and we just got to him in in, in game one uh in, in game one of the finals but he dominated us but he tried to come back in to try and help them salvage something in, in game three and um you know it, it you could tell he was you know he was sore from the day before uh, he, he wasn't pitching like he, no, he normally was and the runs kind of piled on but i think the format the best of three format i think i think that's the future and i think it's really entertaining it was fantastic to uh, watch the number of people that were that watching that game on the uh, watching those games on the Sunday. I think there was it might not sound that big numbers to your listeners, but you know we probably had 60, 70 people watching, and you don't get that. Uh, you normally get some guy walking past with his dog who asks what's happening, and and it, it was fantastic to have to have people that have travelled in from the local softball leagues, the from other teams. Um, even people who used to pl- people who used to play with the Trojans years ago, um, and it was great to have all that all that support and people taking in the games on the day. It's the way it should be. 
a lot of people are interested and they don't and they don't understand it there are a lot of rules you know um that that perhaps aren't apparent if you're not familiar with the sport when i first started playing at junior levels i used to watch all the games on channel five just to try and get a better understanding of the rules so that i could understand them things like the the infield fly rule um i had i had no clue what that was at the beginning i just I, it was just guesswork to me watching games has been a, a big benefit and i think as well with it being the channel five coverage at the time the way that uh, i think it, it was uh, johnny and todd uh, they used to they put a very british twist on it so they explained a lot of basics that perhaps the uh, american coverage wouldn't go into because there's there's a level of assumed knowledge there Paul Harrison um, has asked, do you recommend football or footy as a, a good way of getting fit to play baseball or <laughs> softball? Um, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> is that against, a bit uh, of a trolling question? Do you know Paul or is it? I, I, I do know Paul, yeah. Uh, Paul, and I, Paul and I used to work together. Um, so he's obviously seen that I've, uh, that I've that you know, that you've, you've put me on. I, I retweeted it, so he's probably seen that. Um, yeah, I've I've just come off crutches. I tore my I tore a muscle in my calf uh, last week, uh, trying to stay fit uh, for baseball, uh, playing football over over the winter. It's actually the second injury I've had where I've uh, hurt my pre-season, uh, my, my you know my pre-baseball season um, by getting injured playing football. And in neither instance uh, was there another player anywhere near me. Just getting older, and my uh, and my my body likes to break down. Yeah, I've held off from playing basketball until I hit 40, so I can join an over 40s league and be a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> so next week's guest is the Great Britain pitching and catching coordinator, Will Linton, and he's uh, messaged him with a question for you. It says, <laughs> Liverpool have one of the most decorated histories in British baseball. How do you see the Trojans leading us to a better and brighter future over the next 10 years? Uh, that's a Dan, that's a great question. Um, uh, we're we're trying to grow right now. I think the, the future the future I think is is in, is in, uh, increasing the accessibility of baseball. I mentioned I mentioned before about it being a bit of a labour of love, and if you don't love it, you won't play it. Um, so really, we'd like to see some some local leagues, uh, and we're we're starting. We're building the connections. The merger with the the merger with the softball league that we that we spoke of, that we uh, finalised this morning. We're building those bridges and we just want uh, versions of the sport to be played all the time on Merseyside. Whether it's whether it's uh, softball or baseball, we want to see it played locally uh, and we want people to be able to to play um, when they've got a spare two or three hours rather than having to give up their, you know, their, their full Sunday, one of their two days off in a week uh, to come and play. And very often when you get to a certain point as well, when you get to a certain age, you also give up your Saturday night to play because you can't go out and then drive two hours to hold the next day after you've had a skin fall the night before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it, it, it is a big sacrifice. So for us, we'd like to sort of we'd like to promote a lot of a lot more local play. Uh, we're seeing really good attendances at our training sessions. Forty five today was phenomenal. We had we regularly had sort of twenty five to thirty. Um, at our training sessions uh, midweek last year, uh, some of them were players for our, you know, for our teams, but many more were just people who'd heard about us and wanted to come down and, and, and give it a go. Um, but they're not able to commit to the, you know, to, to what's required to play at the moment. So perhaps they can get involved this year through the softball and in the future with with local baseball leagues as well. We've got. I, I should point. I should say as well. Scott Gray's been. Um, he's one of. He's the Tugens manager, um, and he's been fantastic at almost revolutionising our midweek training sessions. And uh, I know that his whole team would uh, would would fight for him. Um, they, they you know they, they love him. He puts in so much hard work, um, and he's been a driving force behind uh, improving those uh, improving those training sessions. What we've not had at Liverpool in my time is any extensive youth programme, uh, and that's something that we're trying to work on at the moment. So we've got a we've got a youth development committee found, uh, formed, and that's got Dave Martin Byers, uh, Chris Pittard, and uh, Jill and Cameron Miller. Um, they're all really passionate about developing a youth programme, and I think I can't wait to see um, when that starts bearing fruit. We've got quite basic plans for this year we're hoping to just sort of hold maybe five or six sessions just to get people playing but then next year we're hoping to take at least one team to the bbf youth national baseball championships that are held at farnham park 
there isn't really a, uh, when I when I was young I was lucky that there was a a northern uh, youth baseball league and no such thing exists now um, so you have to find a tournament and the really the only tournaments that you can play in are the national championships so we're just going to try and develop that and hopefully these are all things that help the Trojans grow help the sport grow um, and you know put baseball on the map uh, over the next 10 years lovely um sounds like you're really passionate about about the sport and it's, it's great to hear that you you're trying to get so many young people involved too um it, it kind of leads into another question then from jim who was like how did you fall in love with baseball as a sport to begin with by accident um so i uh i found up a friend uh, or, uh, uh two friends of mine were brothers uh, when i was living in bolton i was i was about 14 years old uh, I phoned them up to see what they were doing that evening, whether they wanted to go out and do something. Um, and they told me that they were off to try out for the local baseball team. And they said, do you want to come? Um, so I went along. I'd never played before. Um, they would they had baseball gloves. They'd got cousins in Canada. Um, so other than throwing around in their garden, I'd never played before. So it was a bit of a shock to the system. It turned out a few of the guys that also played on that team I was at school with. I started playing from there and I very quickly fell in love with it. It was an odd one for me because I'd always been a, I'd always been a footballer uh, and probably a pretty average footballer, to be honest. I was, you know, I was, I was fairly reasonable, very, very lightweight. By the time I was 14, I was playing against men and I was still, um, I was still four foot 11 or something. So I started to lose out physically and I felt that baseball, that didn't matter as much. Perhaps I couldn't hit the ball as far, but as an individual, um, I was able to play despite my literal shortcomings. Yeah, it, it all sort of came. It all sort of came from there, and I've just been in love with it ever since. Two questions to go. Um, first one's from me, and um, I don't actually follow a major league baseball team, um, so I'm trying to find someone to support and root for um, for next season. I've had um, Tom from Backflip and Nerd say, "Just watch the season as a neutral, see so you enjoy watching, and go from there." I've also had two. Boston Red Sox fans on, uh, tell me not to support Boston uh, Red Sox. Um, it was Josh last week was telling me to like look for underdogs and gave me loads of really good reasons to support and root a team, root for a team. And uh, Kevin McAdam was was saying that we should look look at the Mets, like pick a, a sort of a team where I'd actually get a chance to watch them play. So uh, do you follow anyone in particular? And is there any reason why I should support your team? Uh, so I follow the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, the reason I follow them is uh, I spent years not really following any team in baseball. I used to watch players rather than teams. Mm -hmm. So back when back when Barry Bonds was you know hitting all his home runs, yeah, and um, yeah. when Derek Jeter was was making ridiculous plays, you, you know you fo you follow you follow these guys, the big names of the sport. Uh, Cal Ripken was one of my original heroes when I first started playing. He was a shortstop and then third baseman for the Baltimore Orioles, and um, I started playing fantasy baseball. I was lucky enough to draft to draft the uh, the Dodgers pitching staff, and that was in a particular year where they were phenomenal. They had the, they had Kershaw and Greinke. Uh, Jansen was at the top of his game, and uh, I just started because I drafted the entire staff. That's how that version of the the game worked. I started checking on those games. That's how I fell in love with the Dodgers. I think for you, you're a Bolton fan, so you have enough suffering in your life I do. Uh, already. Um, if you wanted to support a team like Bolton, then you probably support Baltimore Orioles because they're, they're terrible. Uh, they've got a lovely stadium, um, but they can't win a game, which fits in very well with the Bolton Wanderers ethos right now. But I think because you have such pain and suffering in your life already supporting Bolton, you could do a lot worse than supporting the, the, the Dodgers. Uh, the Dodgers are going into the uh, season as favourites for the, for, the, for the National League pennant, I would have thought. Um, we've got a little bit of a question mark at the moment over whether this Mucky Betts uh, and David Price trade goes through. If it doesn't and we keep Alex Verdugo, I'm absolutely fine with that, by the way. He's a phenomenal uh, talent. So uh, so I think you could I think you could do really well to support the, the Dodgers. The only thing I would, the only negative is that most of the game starts at 3.15 in the morning. Um, last word is all yours. Okay. Um, you know, Baseball in Britain is uh, is is thriving. It's fantastic. You know, there's there's a lot of people out there who uh, would love to speak to you about it. 
um, not just you, Matt, anyone who's listening to this right now. Um, so please uh, get on the BS UK website, find out where your local team is. Whether you're whether you're 12, whether you're 70, there'll be a way for you to get involved. Um, if you don't want to play, you might be able to score, umpire. It's a fantastic game uh, and we're a very welcoming community. I just uh, encourage anybody who wants to, to, to get involved. Thank you, Ian. And again, thank you so much for giving me the um, best part of your evening. I know you've been really busy today and, and best part of yesterday. And um, I'd like to keep in touch. We'll keep tweeting and um, I wish you all the best of luck for the up and coming season. Not too much luck. Like I'd like to see the Manchester team uh, do well. But, uh, we'll agree to disagree there. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're a lovely bunch of guys. I wish them I wish them all a success. But, you know, we, we've, we've got to try and beat them when we play against each other. Great stuff. Ian, please, thank you very much for your time. That is the Liverpool GM there um, for the for the Trojans. I uh, hope you've all enjoyed the show. As I mentioned earlier, our next guest is the Great Britain Pitching and Coaching Coordinator, Will Linton. And uh, if you have any questions you want to send in, a lot of you have already sent stuff over, please feel free to send them over to the email address of britishbaseballpodcast at gmail.com or you can direct message me on Twitter at BritBaseballPod. Thanks for listening. ta right.